Our scripture today is found in the book of James. Book of James, chapter 1, verse 17 to 27. Uh, as you're looking for that, uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this, your word, which you have joyfully and freely given to each of us. We ask you, Lord, that as we read this word together, that your spirit enters our hearts and our, and, and our minds, that we may be focused upon you and what it is that, and where it is that you are leading us. We pray also this day for your mercy to be upon the sermon, that it too might be used for your glory and honor. We thank you for all that you are, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. James, chapter 1, verse 17 to 27. Hear now God's word. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift, is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave birth to us by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious, and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How many of you have a mirror? Mirror? How many of you use it? Yeah? Because you look like you do. You did good today. The hair is in a good place. You know, the makeup looks nice. You guys did all right. Now, why do you look in a mirror? What's the purpose of a mirror? Put on makeup, make sure it's on correctly. How many of you have been in such a hurry that the mirror that you used was your rear view mirror? Yeah, a few of you, sure. Now what's the purpose of a mirror? To put your makeup on, what else? Do what? See your reflection, why do you want to see your reflection? To see how you look? Do your hair in the mirror? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what's coming up behind you? Yeah. What else for a mirror? Make sure no one's sneaking up on you. Look at your pores. You have that, any of you had that special 100 times uh, magnifying mirror where your pores look like craters? You have one of those? that you look at and, you, you know, you want to make sure that everything's just perfect. Those, I mean, those aren't very nice, I don't think. Uh, make sure, you know, pop your blackheads or your whiteheads or, you know, whatever kind of pimp, pimp pimples you have. How many of you look in a mirror to see that, you know, life has added one more wrinkle? Or some of you might have just stopped counting? I don't know. Mirror is definitely a way to look on ourselves, to check ourselves out, but how many of you look yourself in the eye 
when you look in a mirror? Because we're not really looking at our eyes, are we? We're looking at our nose, we're looking at our lips, our chins, uh, or in my case, lack thereof. We're looking at our ears, make sure that the, the, the hair is not growing too bad. Where, uh, nose hairs are a thing, you know, guys, uh, nose hairs and, and ear hairs, that's what guys won't worry about. Mike's like, I don't worry about that stuff. And I tell you what, but we don't look each uh, ourselves in the eye, not very often. If you've ever looked at yourself in the eye in the mirror, you notice one thing, and it's actually hard to look at yourself in the eye, because what eye do you look at? Yeah, it's, you, you'll see your eye shifting as you look at your, your, yourself. But if you pick an eye, or the bridge of, of the nose, like we do with peep, peep people, you pick an eye or a bridge of the nose and you stare at it. Now, I did this when I was 11 years old at a friend's house. His name was Jeff Late. It doesn't mean anything to you, but just memories. Um, and we were at his house and um, looking, his, his mom in the bedroom had like a big mirror, uh, as a lot of bedrooms have. And I looked at myself in the mirror and tried to challenge myself to see who blinks first. Ever do that? That's weird. I mean, really, really weird. Try to see who blinks first in a mirror because it starts to become surreal. Like the person you're looking at is not actually you. And if that person should, I was thinking, like if that person should move and I don't move, then like this is going to get really weird really fast. But looking ourselves in the eye is a very difficult thing in a mirror. It's an exercise that I've been doing uh, for a little bit now, off and on, every time I look at myself in the mirror to make sure everything looks good, then I end my session by looking at myself in the eye. And I will tell you something. This world, the culture that, that, that we're a part of, especially the United States, but it's not just the United States, <coughs> is designed in such a way that it doesn't want you to be happy with yourself. When you look yourself in the eye, sometimes it's hard to because are we happy with what we see? Are we happy with who we are? Now, again, the world doesn't want you to be happy. Why? Because they want you to buy stuff, to buy more makeup, to buy, uh, get your teeth fixed, to, to get your ears lowered. That's called getting a haircut. To get a haircut. To, to, to do all these things to improve our, our, ourselves, so we pay more money and pay more money, we help the, the economy, you know, roll around and all that sort of stuff. But actually looking yourself in the eye and being happy with who you are is a difficult thing. At least it has been in, in, in my, my own ex, 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 experience. I can never hold my own stare for too long. But when we look ourselves in the eye, when we think about ourselves, who are we? Men, women, mothers and, and daughters, and fathers and brothers. We're a lot of different things. I heard a, a quote online recently, and if you follow my sister, you might have seen it because it was on her, her, her uh, face, Facebook page. It wasn't her quote, though. And um, in it, they were talking about the uh, objectification of women. And, and um, it said that uh, before you begin to objectify a woman, remember that she is somebody's mother, daughter, sister, child. And in doing that, then what you end up doing is you, you put um, a soul to the person uh, uh, you connect in some way. The quote, however, um, had on it, uh, mother, daughter, sister, mother, scratched out. That before you objectify a woman, remember that she is someone. That's enough. Sometimes we place value upon people based upon, and in that saying, based upon the fact that they're a mother, or the fact that they're a daughter, or the fact that they're a sister, or the fact that they're a teacher, or whatever the case is. 
When we look ourselves in the mirror, our value doesn't come from what we do, but our value comes from whose we are. We are gods. We belong to God. If you're trying to value another person based upon what they do in life, who's more valuable, a doctor or someone who works at at McDonald's? God created both. God loves both. Jesus died for both. They both have equal value in God's eyes. And yet we tend to hierarchy. We tend to place on certain scales. We know of an entire society that was based upon that. And in, 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 in India, the caste society, if you were of the lowest level, you were nothing, untouchable, because literally you weren't touched, separated away from the rest of society, where those who were in the highest levels were most revered. Now, that's, that caste system is no longer active in a um, official sense, but sometimes people are, it's difficult to drop that I, I, idea for uh, some when we look at our scripture today, the book of James in general, if you ever get the opportunity, read it from uh, front to back. James is like five or six uh, chap- chapters. It talks very much about how one lives as a Christian, how it is we're supposed to act, who we are and what it looks like. And in our scripture, it talks about everything that we're given and everything we do, do with it comes from uh, God's, God's help, God's guidance, God's love. And that um, we were created for God and, and, and through God's truth. Remember how, uh, how we're supposed to live. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Our anger doesn't produce God's righteousness. It goes all the way up to here. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers... They look like those who they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and in going away immediately forget what they were like. When we look at ourselves in a mirror, any of you give each other give yourselves pep 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 talks in a mirror? No, no pep talk people? You've got this. You can do this. Everything's gonna be all right today. But you Lori does it before class. <laughs> or if not, maybe it'd be helpful. I don't know. <laughs> I, I do it on Sunday. Again, maybe not in front of a mirror, but it'll be okay. Everything will be through my kidding. I do it every day. Okay, you can get up. You can get out of bed. It's going to be all right. You've got this. And when we look ourselves in the eye in the mirror... Uh, we can see two things ourselves, as defined by culture. You know, that person who needs fixed all the time, the person who, who's never quite right, the one who needs to get the hair cut or the, the teeth whitened or the, the cheeks raised or the wrinkles uh, take, taken care of. Or we can look ourselves in the eye and see the person who God made, the one who Jesus died for. We could love that person. But when we see the person that culture sees, when we walk away, we have to keep checking. We've got to keep making sure. Oh, I, I love it. Teenage boys these, these days, they're the worst. Uh, it was at a at the food bank in Manor. Young kid, good, good looking kid, probably 11th or 12th, 12th grade, he was helping with the food, 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 food pantry in, in Manor. And um, the haircuts I see on, on the young boys uh, these days, I like to call them quaffs. Because I don't know, it kind of raises that, that fluffy look, you know, that, the, that, like that's what I think of when I think of a quaff. So they got these like fluffy things. And um, every chance he got, he was on his phone. Not typing, but looking at himself and <laughs> fixing his hair. And then I look at him a couple minutes later and 
but his hair was the exact same as it was a, a couple minutes ago. We keep checking ourselves, making sure we're perfect, making sure we're right, making sure everything here is good. Like the guy who goes away and immediately forgets what they're like, when we immediately forget what we like, we've got to look again to make sure we're still all right. Because we just hear the word. We don't put it into action. If we put the word into action, then what we're actually doing is too busy to look in the mirror and making sure everything's all right. And when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we see whose we are, that we are loved, we are cared for, that Christ gave us what it is that we need, we don't need the mirror for a bit. Because then we're out doing what it is God created us to do. We're at living that life. No longer worried if a hair is out of place because God will take care of that. It'll be all right. The worst, worst thing uh, for me is when I, when I shave and I, I miss a patch. But if I'm doing God's work at that time, I'm too busy to worry about the patch. Who cares about the patch? God's got hold, hold of me. It'll be all right. I can still love the next person just as well with that patch that I miss as without it. Because it's not about me anyway. It's about God. And it's about that love that God helps us to share with one, one, one another. And so we might ask ourselves then, if we are like people who look in a mirror and turn away and don't forget, those who are doers of the word, then what does that look, look like? Well, James puts it down very succinctly. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, to care for those who can't care for themselves, and to keep oneself unstained by, by the uh, world. Sound familiar? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, keeping yourself unstained by the world. And love your neighbor as, as, as yourself by taking care of those who can't take, take care of, 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 of them, them, themselves. This is what Christianity looks like. We hear. That's an important part of what we do. But doing, putting that into practice is of the utmost importance also. So as we draw closer to God throughout this week, let us remember this. Those who drank the water that Christ gives us will never be thirsty again. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that in all things we can trust you. And we pray that we walk along the paths that you have laid before us. In your name we pray. Amen. Go in peace.